Hello and welcome to the session on the characteristics of public schools in 1800 relating directly to the A2 PE OCR specification. And really important we start off by recognising that for summer exam 2013 of the A2 P with OCR, this topic is hot. We are looking at a hot topic, hot topic. So uh, it's one really worth getting to know very, very well um, and making sure that you can answer questions very fluently on this topic. Let's get rid of that now. So this is why we're uh, looking at it here. If you're not, if, if you're preparing for subsequent exams, check whether this uh, has come up in recent papers and whether you are likely to be questioned on it or not. But anyway, it's very useful being able to talk about it. Anyway, we want to know what were public schools like before the three stages of development. So it's really our first piece of theory on the public schools. What were they like in 1800 before we got those three stages of technical developments? Well, let's look at the simple information first of all. These schools, and we'll put these in in blue, they were non-local. What relevance did that have? The fact that boys boarded, we actually have that as our key word, it will get us a mark. Uh, it was a boarding school. It meant that the boys had lots of free time. So if you're asked to explain why the characteristic uh, had an effect on um, the sporting provision uh, at the schools, it was because they were boarding schools. They had lots of free time and energy to take part in sport. Secondly, the schools were, or at least the families, paid fees. We call that, of course, fee paying these public schools. That's what we mean by a public school. In sort of British English. Because they were fee paying, the schools had a large income um, to uh, develop things like facilities. On top of that, they were endowed. So that is endowments in the form of financial investment. Oh, just let me do that correctly. Uh, they were uh, endowed. So they received financial investment from certain uh, individuals and organisations, but they were also endowed with significant grounds in rural rural locations allowing for the development of opulent facilities as we mentioned before with the fee paying. The schools were run by a group of what we call trustees in today's terms. In state education we kind of call them the board of governors but by the trustees we are talking about people who manage the strategic direction of the school and most importantly appointed the head teacher. Now, of course, at this point, we could talk about examples such as Thomas Arnold, who was appointed by the trustees at rugby school, but they appointed the head teacher. The schools were Spartan. They were rough and tough, involving uh, bullying and brutality. And this prepared the boys for a kind of tough existence. And therefore, sports represented this tough, physical, brutal kind of experience, rugby being a classic example of that. All of the boys who attended these schools, these schools were sons of gentry. Of course, that meant that they arrived to these schools with similar expectations, similar traditions, an experience and an expectation to be sporting. That was one of the features of being a male in a privileged, exclusive upbringing in 19th century Britain. So, the sons of gentry meant that they arrived at the schools with these kind of similar traditions, a tradition of playing and taking part in sport. The schools were large. Now that's important because of course uh, lots of boys uh, in one location with lots of time on their hands it meant that this led to teen games. And if you have to explain the influence of the kind of large characteristic it is the fact that they encourage teen games to develop. Now then they are our characteristics. Do not forget that you might need to explain the influence on sports. So just to go through those once again, non-local non or boarding meant that the boys had lots of time on their hands to play sport. Feed paying, large income to develop facilities, endowed exactly the same. Trustees uh, appointed, sometimes, certainly in the period we're looking at here, 1800 onwards, liberalising headmasters who developed sports in their schools. The Spartan feature meant the rough, tough, brutal existence was represented in physical, tough, competitive sports. Sons of gentry, they arrived at the school with similar traditions and expectation of playing sports. And the fact they were large meant that it developed 
team games. I hope this question comes up for you. These are the characteristics of public schools in 1800 relevant to the A2P OCR exam. This topic is hot for summer 2013. Good luck with your revision. Thank you.